For centuries, William Shakespeare has been heralded as the greatest playwright and poet in the English language. From Romeo and Juliet to Hamlet, his works have transcended time, leaving an indelible mark on literature, theater, and culture. But in the shadows of this immense legacy lingers a controversial question. Did Shakespeare really write all of the works attributed to him, or was he merely a front for someone else? This debate, known as the Shakespeare authorship question, has intrigued scholars, writers, and conspiracy theorists alike. While most accept that William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon is indeed the author of these famous works, there are those who argue that someone else, perhaps an aristocrat or a well-educated intellectual, was the true genius behind the timeless plays and sonnets. Who was William Shakespeare? William Shakespeare was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, a small town in England. He came from a modest background. His father was a glove maker, and there is little evidence to suggest that Shakespeare received a formal education beyond grammar school. By the late 1580s, he had moved to London, where he began working as an actor and playwright. Over the next two decades, Shakespeare would go on to write 38 plays and 154 sonnets, becoming one of the most famous literary figures in the world. However, skeptics have long pointed out a few inconsistencies in this narrative. How could a man from a rural town with no university education produce such an immense body of work? With knowledge ranging from law and politics to foreign languages and the intricacies of court life, these doubts have fueled theories that someone else, someone with more education, privilege, and access could have been the true author. The case for Shakespeare's authorship. To this day, mainstream scholars support the idea that Shakespeare was indeed the author of his works. There is ample documentation from his time linking him to the plays and sonnets, including references from other playwrights and writers who knew him personally. In 1592, the dramatist Robert Greene famously criticized Shakespeare in a pamphlet, calling him an upstart crow who fancied himself a playwright. This, alongside many other historical records, supports the view that Shakespeare was well known in London's theater scene during his lifetime. He worked as an actor, collaborated with other writers, and even became a shareholder in the Globe Theater, where his plays were performed. Additionally, Shakespeare's name appears on the title pages of many of his plays, and his contemporaries praise his work. The first collection of his plays, The First Folio, was published in 1623, just a few years after his death, with tributes from fellow playwrights, such as Ben Jonson, who called Shakespeare not of an age, but for all time. The alternative authors... Edward de Vere, Francis Bacon, and others. Despite the historical evidence supporting Shakespeare's authorship, various alternative candidates have been proposed over the years. Among the most popular is Edward de Vere, the Earl of Oxford, an aristocrat and poet who lived during Shakespeare's time. Supporters of the Oxfordian theory argue that de Vere had the education, access to royal court life, and literary talent necessary to write Shakespeare's works. His supporters point to similarities between events in De Vere's life and the themes in Shakespeare's plays. Another candidate is Sir Francis Bacon, a philosopher and statesman who some believe used Shakespeare as a front to disguise his own literary endeavors. The Baconian theory suggests that Bacon encoded secret messages in the plays, revealing his true authorship. However, this theory has been widely discredited due to a lack of solid evidence. Others have proposed various combinations of authors, including playwright Christopher Marlowe, poet Sir Philip Sidney, or even a collaborative group of writers. Why does the debate continue? One reason the Shakespeare authorship question continues to fascinate is because it taps into a broader human curiosity about identity and creativity. How could a man of humble origins with no record of higher education or noble connections, produce works that delve so deeply into human nature, politics, and the world. This debate also reflects our cultural obsession with authenticity. In a world where we often assume that success must come from privilege, the story of a commoner like Shakespeare achieving greatness seems too good to be true for some. Yet, Shakespeare's story of true proves that genius can come from any background and that one doesn't need a noble lineage or formal education to make an impact on the world.
Real-life examples of genius from humble beginnings. Shakespeare's story isn't the only example of a person rising to prominence despite modest beginnings. Maya Angelou, born in poverty and facing immense challenges as a black woman in 20th century America, became one of the most celebrated poets and authors of her time. Similarly, Albert Einstein, who struggled academically as a child, went on to revolutionize science with his theory of relativity. Like Shakespeare, these individuals challenge the notion that greatness requires privilege or education. Their stories remind us that talent, hard work, and a unique vision can triumph over obstacles. Conclusion Does it really matter? While the Shakespeare authorship debate may never be fully resolved, what remains undeniable is the impact of the works attributed to him. Whether he wrote them himself or collaborated with others, the plays and sonnets attributed to William Shakespeare have shaped literature, theater, and culture for over 400 years. Ultimately, the magic of the words transcends their authorship, proving that genius can indeed spring from unexpected places. In the end, the question isn't so much was Shakespeare a fraud, but rather does it matter? What matters is that these works continue to inspire, challenge, and move us, regardless of who wrote them.